Welcome to flight number eight of I Like Cake, the Lycoming powered cast at 111M. Just checking my phone here to make sure the camera's on. I'm running with a camera on my forehead for the first time today. Checking both sides in front of me to make sure there's nobody around. And double checking that the camera's on, little red lights flashing. Alright, so some aspects of today's flight. Just a quick brief. The main objectives today are to test a couple of pads I made to put under my thighs to make sure that my legs don't fall asleep. The last couple of flights I've done have been anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes long. And about about the 10 minute mark, my legs start to fall asleep, which makes landings very interesting when I can't feel my feet. I'm just getting everything set up here. You can see me adjusting those thigh pads, really pushing them under my legs to support my legs as much as possible. Giving the canopy latch one more check. Another objective on today's flight is to fly for longer than 20 minutes. So I'm aiming to do somewhere between 45 minutes an hour, most likely 45 minutes. I mean, I'm priming the fuel system here, run until the pump pressurizes, and then about a three count after that. Uh, I pull the mixture to idle, throttle to idle, flip on the ignition and the magneto, check right, check left, check forward, spin. You can see here, I either over-primed or under-primed is normally the engine catches in about two blades if I prime it just perfectly. And today was not perfect. <laughs> so going back to that 45 minute flight, I'm looking to fly a little bit longer. This will be the second flight with the modified oil breather. So the crankcase breather is coming out of the dipstick tube instead of off the rocker covers, which is where it was coming out before, and which we found ended up causing a huge oil slick on the belly and an oil loss rate of about one and a half quarts per 20 minutes. The last flight I did was about 20 minutes long and I lost no oil. So to, on today's longer flight, I'm hoping to also lose no oil. Another objective for today's flight is to do a couple speed triangles. I'm going to verify a new static system on the airplane. In addition to the static port on the left side of the fuselage that I've used for all my flights so far. Uh, my buddy and I installed a piccolo tube on the right side of the fuselage in roughly the same place uh, longitudinally as the static port on the left side of the fuselage. And then I cross bled that into the existing static system and try to reduce some error. So we'll go up and see uh, if the, first of all, if the airspeed and altimeter needles swing as much as they did before. And then we'll also see if there's as much error. And hopefully we'll be able to correlate the indicated airspeed to true airspeed and then also to ground speed in order to figure out where my static error is. All right, now we're taxiing out to runway 28, but the taxi is pretty boring, so we'll just cut straight to the run-up. Here we are in the run-up-ish area. The wind is primarily coming out of the west, but it's pretty shifty. Inukern's known for its uh, fairly shifty, gusty, thermally winds. Here I'm checking the CHT that I have on four cylinders on that rotary switch there, just to make sure that each cylinder is coming up to temp and that the temps are tracking about even. I'm looking over at my left wing, make sure the controls look good. And then, of course, checking the camera again to make sure the little red light is flashing. Now for my run up, first thing that I do is I check to make sure the fuel valve is in the on position. Here I'm looking around to see where the predominant wind is. I want to make sure that I'm not not facing into the wind. I definitely want to be facing into the wind. I come stick back, and then I add power up to about 1600 RPM. Do an ignition check, do a mag check, and I'm concentrating on where the nose is at. Today's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than any of the flights that I've done before. So I wanted to make sure that the engine was lean. And there you can kind of feel that I went a little bit too far. But caught it before it completely died, which is nice because hot starting these things, especially with the fuel injection, is a pain in the butt. Another thing I'm checking during the run-up is just general feel of the airplane, any abnormal vibration. I want to make a note of that. And today I didn't feel anything out of the ordinary. Oil pressure looked good. Fuel pressure looked good. complete, double check 
the fuel valve, make sure it's on, get the thigh pads underneath my legs, and I am ready to go. You can see the X there at the end of runway, uh, runway 20. They're doing some repaving on the runway, so that is not a usable runway at the moment. With the wind kind of coming out of a direction where it would have favored 20 if it was open, there's a bit of a crosswind from the left. And as I taxied onto runway 28, the wind shifted around to be a right crosswind. You see there the pavement is actually in pretty bad shape on 28, so I offset myself to the left to send a minor bit for the takeoff wheel to give a little tail wheel out of all the pavement gaps. Still getting a feel for exactly how much I need to um, let the stick move forward in order to get the tail to fly. Today I overestimated it a little bit. I also broke ground a little bit earlier than I probably should have. Again, given the higher density altitude for today, it took a little bit longer on the ground than I was expecting. Here I am, 120 miles an hour climb. It seems to be a pretty comfortable climb. Established at 120, I'm going to turn back to the airport. And just like that, we're magically at 6,500 feet. The Southern Sierra Mountains there off the nose. We've been flying for about 25 minutes at this point. I decided to edit out the speed triangle portion of the flight because the data wasn't super great. So far though, the thigh pads have been working great. My legs aren't asleep yet. And the piccolo tube seems to be working very well. The airspeed indicator seems to be reading much closer to the truth data that I got on the first flight from the Chase aircraft. But we still need to fly for another 20 minutes. I want to do some stalls before I head back, but these mountains are super tempting. So let's take advantage of that and go have a little bit of fun. And we're back over the airport heading east. Make a sweeping 90 degree turn over the airport to head north. At this point, we're about 30 minutes into the flight. So I'm starting to think about heading back. But before I head back, because of the new static system, I want to do a couple power off stalls just to make sure I know where on my airspeed indicator the power off stall occurs. From there, I'll multiply that number by 1.3 in order to get my approach speed. I had numbers for this already with the previous static system, but I figured that with a new configuration, if there is a significant reduction in error or an increase in error, it's good to know where I stand right now so there aren't any surprises in the pattern when I'm down lower and don't have as many options. So here I'm coming up on the speed. I'm about 90 miles an hour right now, slowly holding it back, slowly holding it back, letting the airspeed bleed off slowly. I don't want to artificially decrease my indicated stall speed by zooming into the stall, so I'm letting myself stabilize about 80 miles an hour previously the nose bobbled and fell through at about 70 miles an hour here you can see it's starting to bobble and then it finally fell through this one happened at 75 miles an hour 
So there is a difference in the direction that could possibly be dangerous if I didn't go back and redo these power off stalls and verify my new system. Here I'm back at 120 miles an hour, just gained a little bit of airspeed and dropped a bit of altitude. And now I'm slowly throttling back in the same stable profile I was for the first stall. I'm just gonna go through this again, make sure that I can do the same thing twice and I get it repeatable. You see the nose is a little bit higher this time, but same sort of thing. A little bit of bobble, a little bit of bobble, and then the nose just falls down. Very benign, very straightforward. My CG is very far forward. In fact, it's almost on the forward limit per the Cassett 111 plans. So I would not expect that my power off stall characteristics would be terrible. But as you can see here, the stall is completely benign. Time to head back to the airport. Well, here we are in the 45 for the left downwind runway 28, or almost to the 45, I should say. We're at pattern altitude, about 140 miles an hour. Just going to get established here. I'm going to aim for somewhere between 120, 130 miles an hour on downwind. You can see all the terminal buildings and hangars down there at Indy Kern. The left traffic for runway 28 is kind of fun because you get to fly over your hangar, fly right over your friends, and they'll tell you if you flew a bad pattern or not because there's no, no cheating the geometry on this one. All right, so I'm looking back, trying to see, based on my speed, how far out I should tag this around. Another thing about this approach that I haven't dealt with before is the wind is significantly stronger than I've experienced before. When I took off, it was about 10 knots, but gusting up to 15. By the time I'm coming back now, the wind is about 18, going up just over 20 and gusting to 25. Thankfully, 270, so it's only 10 degrees off to the left, but it's still something that I took into consideration when planning the approach. I've been flying fairly shallow approaches trying to target that 1.3 VSO, which in this case, since my VSO was 75 miles an hour, coming over the threshold here at 100 miles an hour. But I still floated more than I'd like. Still getting a hang of this touchdown in a tail low wheel landing, which is how I've been doing all my landings so far. The airplane is extremely easy to control directionally. As you can see here, I made the mistake of landing on the center line. I mentioned when I took off, the pavement is very cracked along the center line, which is why on takeoff I was offset to the left. Here you can kind of see that I rolled out to the right, since I remember the center line was cracked, but it turns out the right side is even more cracked than the center line. So here I migrated back over to the left to try to save my tailwheel from getting beat up too much. 20 mile an hour wind right on the nose really helps slow the airplane down. The runway is 4,100 feet. The taxiway near the end of the runway is about 200 feet before the threshold and I touched down about 500 feet down the runway. So whatever the math is there, I did not use all the runway. I didn't have to touch the brakes and I was able to make the turn off of this taxiway easily. See there I have the anti, <laughs> the anti quartering tailwind um, control deflection in so I don't flip over. This being the strongest wind that I've ever taxied in or landed in, I was surprised that the tailwheel never left the ground you know, the tail had no tendency to come up, and diving away with the controls from the wind resulted in very positive control. The only control input needed was a bunch of left rudder to keep the airplane on the center line from weather raining. All right, do a quick debrief of the flight. First note, the thigh pads worked great. Here I am, 45 minutes in, just did a landing. I could feel my toes. It was fantastic. Second thing, the piccolo tube seemed to work very well. As I mentioned before, the airspeed needle sw swung less this flight than it has in previous flights, and the altimeter needle followed that as well. The airspeed seems to be reading about 10 miles an hour lower, which corresponds very well with the truth data that I got on my first flight from the Chase aircraft, which indicated that I had about a 10 mile an hour airspeed error. On the next flight or two, I plan to go do a couple more triangles with ground speed and an OAT so that I can correct my indicated airspeed for true airspeed and then compare that to my ground speed at different headings and be able to determine what my static error actually is. For now, the data I got from the speed triangles on this flight 
is not very useful. I'm not going to try to infer anything from that. The third point, third objective of the flight, flying for longer than 20 minutes, definitely successful. The hottest cylinder head temperature for the whole flight was the number one cylinder, and it never got above 400. It teased 400 for a while, but as soon as I leveled off, it crept back down to 375. The number two cylinder hovered between 350 and 375 the whole flight, and the numbers three and four cylinders basically stuck exactly around 300 to 325 degrees. Oil temperature has been an issue on the last couple of flights. It's been too cold, so I have not been able to get the oil temperature above 150 degrees. Today, though, with a slightly higher OAT and a little more climbing, I was able to actually get the oil temperature up to 180 degrees. It was still too low. I know this isn't really a typical problem most people with sport planes have, but I'm going to need to make some mods, some cooling mods, in order to heat my oil so I can get it up above 200 degrees and try to boil off some of the water in the system. Other than that, great flight, beautiful day, no complaints with the airplane, and do this again soon.